Hey Lumberjacks and welcome to Discover Digital, an inside look at technology here at NAU. Technology surrounds us and is integrated in almost every part of our lives. In today's episode, we take a closer look regarding the ITS Project Management Office. I am joined today with IT Project Manager Grace Kwan Ditsworth. Hi, Grace. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? I'm good, too. Would you like to introduce yourself a little bit and explain what you do at ITS? Sure. My name is Grace Huang Ditsworth. My pronouns are they, them, and theirs. And I am an IT project manager and PMP certified person at the ITS Project and Portfolio Management Office here at NAU. That's awesome. So, like, what does all of that entail? What projects do you manage? What projects do you find most interesting? Sure, big questions. So we currently have a pretty small team. It, it grows and it shrinks sometimes, but currently there are three of us and we manage enterprise-wide projects. What that means is that there's lots of projects happening all across the university at all times. And some of them are just within a certain department. So if student affairs is working a project completely internally, I'm probably never gonna hear about it. What I hear about are what we call SPARK projects. It's a long acronym that I actually can't bring up out of my head right this minute. But what that means is they're cross-divisional projects. So let's say um, I'm thinking about a project that I worked on last year. It was the Wind University project. And this was a project to develop a wind consortium amongst three other universities in the US. But it just involved taking a lot of folks from different areas in the university. As you can imagine, that's folks within academic affairs, people within ITS, to develop the IT integration, as well as many other stakeholders across the university that needed to be involved and have their voices heard over the course of that project. So that's the type of project that I would be involved in. Those are what we call higher risk projects. So a higher risk project is one that just has maybe more moving parts. It's got more areas of ITS that have to be involved, more, more people involved, more chances for things to go haywire. And that's when I or somebody else on my team is going to be brought in. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, would you like to maybe give like some examples of like how or what project management looks like coming from like more of a student perspective that doesn't know about everything that goes on into these things? You know, I feel like you guys just make life so much easier for students and we don't even blink and think about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think for on a student side, as somebody who's receiving the services that project managers are doing, I think ideally you never really want to hear about it. <laughs> um, I'm thinking back to when I was a college student, I think I wouldn't have had any idea what a project manager did, let alone what an IT project manager did. Um, and I certainly didn't really know much until I started working in the role. Um, so as a general overview of what project management is. A project is a specific endeavor that's that's that goes on for a specific period of time. So a project is not going to be ongoing work that you do, but um, let's say if you're renovating a house, a project might be we're going to upgrade the shingles because they're out of date, right? So that's gonna be something that you're gonna do over the course of a few weeks. It's got a very specific goal in mind and you know when it's happening and you know when it's done. Something that wouldn't be a project would be just like, we're, we're spring cleaning and it's gonna take a while. We don't have a specific sense of when it's gonna be done. We don't know really what that entails, right? So a project is a little bit more time constrained and it's also more specific in terms of the scope of what happens in the project and what does not happen. So when it comes to IT project management here at the university, a lot of that's going to be about system integration. So we have been using IT to support the back end of lots of things that make things run on the front end for students, staff, and faculty for many, many years. And what that means is that NAU ITS is supporting a lot of different kind of information systems. And sometimes those get upgraded, sometimes those get out of date. And one of the shifts that we're seeing a lot of the time is that systems that we used to support on-premise are now moving into the cloud. And that often means that the service changes a bit. It also means that the 
quality of support, the type of support that we're doing for those products on campus is just changing. We're not necessarily fixing the server itself when it breaks on campus, but we might be calling out to a vendor and saying, we need you all to fix this. So it's those types of shifting services that we typically will integrate IT project management on. Dang, that's awesome. And it's really exciting to hear about it. Do you have like a project that would be one of your favorite ones or like how did you maybe even get into the business of project management? <laughs> all right, so I'll answer that in two parts. I'm gonna start with the first yeah. one. And if I forget to answer the second one, then just nudge me again. Mm -hmm. um, as far as projects that I've worked on, I do have one that I'm really excited about right now that is a little bit top secret. So I can't tell you details about that yet, but um, it is a student facing and very outward facing integration that's going to take something that we currently use in a non-technologically smart way and it's gonna smartify it additionally. Um, and we're working with some external vendors as well to make that happen. So it's again, a lot of moving parts. Anytime that we are rolling out a project, which is like I just said, really visible, really student facing. Um, it means that we have to think really hard about how we communicate that kind of change. Um, on this project, I'm actually not the project manager. I'm functioning in the role of what we call ProSci Change Manager. ProSci is a organization that's created a, a framework for thinking about and navigating change. And change is a huge thing within IT specifically, right? Because we're typically adopting new tools and new functions that we didn't know how to do that before. So thinking really mindfully about the people side of change is actually a really important part of making any kind of IT rollout like this successful. And it was something I never thought about until I started doing this work. So when it comes to this specific project, it means I'm thinking about where are students' heads at when it comes to working with this product? Are they already familiar with it? Are they aware about the need for this? Uh, if they're not aware, then how do we engage them and get them excited about that? Because um, from evaluating the way that IT rollouts go, it's not just as easy as saying, here's the change. On this day, you got to move to using this tool this way go for it because people's heads will absolutely explode if you do it like that. You have to really think about where they're at and, and think about what kind of tools and support people will need to be guided along the way and feel included in that process. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's my answer as far as exciting projects. Some recent ones that I closed out, um, one that I, I'm really excited that we have available is the iLab integration project. So this is a product that allows researchers and graduate student researchers at NAU to access and book not only research equipment here on NAU's campus, but also at U of A and ASU. And it also allows researchers at those facilities to borrow from ours as well. So that's just so neat because as you probably know, research equipment is not cheap. Those things can run into the millions. And so being able to access soft, like just the any of the equipment from all three of our state universities is an amazing asset that we can share. Um, so that's one that we rolled out just about a month and a half ago. And I'm really happy about that. No, oh, that sounds super cool. I didn't even know that we had that feature. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, now I'm more, even, even another reason to go to grad school, you know? <laughs> Um, and it's like, you bring up a really good point about think like looking at all the moving parts and looking into the future, like there's like, things are always updating. And mm -hmm. so with these like student facing features, even thinking about potential updates and what the future will look like for these updates is something that I'm really thankful that all, like all you guys are doing because, like you're saying like software updates all the time there's new things that are going on all the time especially mm -hmm. within the world of ITS that we always just have new things to learn and new things to keep up with mm -hmm. right absolutely and that's something that when it comes to planning that that enterprise level and the shifting and you know which projects are we going to do going to do next um, that's I think one of the big challenges of that is that we have to think even sometimes years ahead to what we call end of life of certain project pr products. So there might be a product that we currently support and we've got 200 people on campus that use it every day and really rely on it for all of their daily business processes. But we know because 
the vendor has gotten in touch with us that it's going to go end of life in three years. So we have to start thinking proactively about what do we need to do to get people ready for that change when it starts to roll out? How much are people going to be freaking out about it, right? How much is this going to impact their business processes? So there's definitely a huge element of looking ahead when it comes to project management, especially at an institution that's as large. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think it's like looking at it in the terms of staff and faculty, whereas something that might be end of life for them doesn't really like impact students, or at least they don't think it may it. not at all impact students, or it might not be visible, right? Yeah. You might be in an office working with somebody and it's taking a little bit longer than you used to for your JAX card to pull up. And it may be that a back end system upgraded and this person's yeah. still learning how to use it. So I think from the user side, it's always really important to bring some patience to those interactions because you never know what kind of back end changes have occurred that might be impacting the service that you're taking advantage of that day. Oh, yeah, that totally makes sense. So how did you get started in IT and then project management? Yeah, good question. Uh, I think as with a lot of career changes, I lucked into it uh, for pretty diverse resume. Uh, when I graduated from college, I worked in a university right out of college within their career planning and resources department. So I was providing career services support to students in an undergraduate context. And I did that for about four years and started as an administrative assistant, then became an employer engagement coordinator. So I was doing sort of externally facing uh, webinars, events, workshops with our, with our employers. Then after that, I transitioned into massage therapy and I was a holistic health practitioner for about three years. And then after that, I thought I'd probably want to get back into higher education. There's something about being in a learning environment where you've got so many young people who are excited about learning that really ignites my interest. And I always have this strong capacity and interest for learning. So being in that environment is really great for me. So I knew I'd probably want to get back into that. And I started work here at NAU within the Center for Health Equity Research. And I worked for them for about two years. Um, during that time, I started a mobile startup and we designed a product that we showed at a, uh, a local startup competition in 2019. And our startup uh, product ended up winning second place. So that was actually the first IT project that I manage independently. That was with a small team of just three people, but it was really exciting and really fun. And I think during that time, I was teaching myself just as I went how to run a project in an agile project management style because we were really learning as we went. And during that time when I was working at SHARE and I was doing the Jiggly Labs startup, I heard about an opportunity with the IT Project and Portfolio Management Office, which was really nascent at that time. It was just growing and they had a program coordinator opportunity open that I knew might eventually be able to grow into an IT project manager role. And I just thought, hey, that sounds like a really exciting opportunity. It seemed like something that was I had never thought of as something that I would want to do, but was absolutely in alignment with my skills and my interests and curiosities. And I had a feeling too that um, for me, stagnancy in work is the thing that will make me bored. Uh, and one of the things that I had an inkling I might like about working in IT project management is one, always learning new exciting systems, but two, also having projects that are really kind of have their own flow over a period of time and then close out and then having a new project where I'm learning something and then closing it out. And oftentimes there is overlap. So it's not necessarily hills, but they're sort of overlapping like this. But um, because I have that constant interest in learning, I had a feeling that I'd gravitate towards this and, and maybe really like it as a long-term thing. So came into it with an open mind as a program coordinator with the group and started learning by shadowing folks. It was actually a really excellent learning opportunity because there is so much really specific vocabulary associated with project management. And then on top of that, IT project management. And it can feel very much like learning a new language where I remember when I first started attending meetings, I just had no clue who anyone like who are you what do you do what do you not do 
oh my gosh, you told me what you do. And it's these eight words I've never heard before. So there's absolutely a lot of learning the vocabulary that you have to do as you ramp up. And then as I started to get more familiar and I had shadowed several different project managers, I started to take on project management of those projects. So I started midstream, maybe one project management started it for the first three months. And now I have a sense of who's in the room and what they do and what the work is. And I was able to take it through to closure. And then now um, I'm at a point where I've managed several projects independently. I went through and I got my project management professional certification, which is a professional certification exam and an opportunity to be promoted into an IT project manager position came up. I applied for the role and I got it. And here we are today. (laughs) Congrats. That's so awesome. And I feel like a common thing that at least I hear within anybody else that I've talked to in ITS is that they a lot of them say that they didn't like always plan in working in mm-hmm. ITS because um, but it always ends up being something that they love to do or like they'll be in one like if they whenever they graduate that's so far off from their degree and stuff but I still right. think it's so cool how like everybody still finds like their interest and their place and it's sometimes the last place that somebody would expect and so mm-hmm. I think the idea of being open-minded and coming into these jobs it's just like so awesome and I think it's like really good advice for any student too to like really just be open-minded to the possibilities and like there's so like how you're saying there's just so Mm -hmm. much that you can learn from any opportunity and other people I'm still like fairly young and so I like (laughs) listening to what everybody has to say and I take it all in and like you're saying like sometimes I go to these like work meetings and I'm like oh my gosh I'm sitting with the adults (laughs) let me take notes as to like on everything that everybody's saying but I, that's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. I, what you just shared made me think of something. Um, when I was an undergrad, I, I got an interdisciplinary studies and humanities degree. And when you get a degree like that, a lot of the time people are asking you, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> and, um, when I was working in the career office, actually one of the most encouraging things that I ever saw was when I would have alumni call in who were in their 40s or 50s saying, you know what, I need to do a career change. And as somebody who is new to the world of work, it it felt very intimidating. You get this message, especially from my parents' generation, I got the message that you pick a career and you stick with it, but that's not really the world of work these days anymore. And so I found it really encouraging to see that there were people so many decades more work experience with me who were still looking forward to shifts. So I think anticipating those shifts and changes and and understanding that life can bring you things you didn't expect is I think one of the best things that you can do. And also I think one of the great things that I learned from that experience too was the ability to figure out what my soft skills were that I got through my degree, through my work, because I think if you looked at my resume, you might not necessarily think that I would be a good IT project manager, and yet I am, right? So being able to figure out what it is about yourself that causes you to be a fit or not a fit with certain types of work, and and I think also not being afraid to try things out. I've definitely had jobs that were not a great fit for whatever reason. And it might've been painful at the time, but I absolutely learned a lot about what I need to do in a workplace to make it sustainable and to make it a happy workplace for me long-term. That's awesome. Um, So like if students are interested in project management, I know you said Mm open-mindedness, what other skills do you think they should acquire or start working on? Yeah, I think one of the big ones is your organizational capacity. So being able to be strategic and analytical and step back to the big picture. A lot of the time when I step into a project, especially one that is maybe midstream, but having some struggles, maybe they're having trouble controlling scope. So scope is the term in project management for the stuff that you're planning to do, right? So um, if I am going to be a cake. What's in scope is going to be baking the layers. It's going to be frosting the cake and it's going to be decorating the cake. But if someone says like, I also want you to hire a drone to fly over the cake to film it, that's not going to be in scope. 
for the making of the cake project, right? Um, so sometimes I'll come in midstream and I'll have to provide that big picture strategic analysis because when you have a lot of people who are amazing at their jobs and subject matter experts in all their positions, sometimes they can get so much in the details that they have trouble figuring out the big picture or have trouble staying on track or on schedule. So I think honing your organizational and strategic planning capacity is a really important skill to the project manager because that's one of the biggest things that you bring to the table. That's the ability to zoom out and think over the long course and the long-term plan of the project. Where do we need to be on a granular basis to make sure that down the line, we're gonna hit our goals. So organizational capacity is number one. Number two is interpersonal capacity. So honing your empathy and being able to really put yourself in the shoes of all the people who are on the project. We would call them stakeholders or resources on the project, depending on their role. Um, but I find that interpersonal communication is really critical to being an effective project manager because it helps you to understand where everyone's coming from and also be able to smooth out any conflicts that come up because conflict is going to happen and it really should happen within a project. Um, the third thing I think are strong communication skills, and that's both verbal and also written communication skills. Um, we often joke in project management that 90% of the job is just communicating with people. And that's definitely the truth of it. A lot of what a project manager does is your job is to understand the roles and responsibilities of everybody in the room and really just to delegate and connect people appropriately, not necessarily to do the specific work on the ground because that's the job of all of the experts that have been allocated to the project. Um, Lastly, I think having a learning mindset and being flexible and excited about learning new things is a really great quality to bring to it. And I think if you think through all those four, right, organizational, interpersonal communication and learning mindset, those are qualities that are really soft skills that you can take from any kind of background that you've come from. That's so interesting and really, really cool that you say that because I think it's a playing on people's skills and having to know and work with people so that your project gets done like mm -hmm. efficiently. And so I think it's really, really cool that you bring that up and very interesting. I would have never thought, but I'm really glad to hear that I can start working on my people's skills now. <laughs> <laughs> And that's something that I think even our CIO has said several times that ITS mm -hmm. is like, it is, we're in the people business and a lot of people don't notice it, but I think that that's what any sort of leadership role or management role would be to know and how to work with people, which is just, I keep, I keep hearing that that's the biggest thing from everyone. So that's just awesome advice. Thank you so much. Um, and also I was wondering, now with COVID, how has all of this affected maybe all of those communication, they, all of those communication pieces that you have and all of the project management efforts? It definitely has. And I think ultimately it's changed it for the better, in my opinion. We were thrown into it in March of 2020. So stuff hit the fan and we realized we were going to need to pivot. And with this particular position, we already did a little bit of a hybrid blend. So we were finding that we were going to in-person meetings, right? Booking the conference room, walking to it, meeting stakeholders there. But we were also taking plenty of meetings at our desks and that might be if it's a really short-term communication that needs to be done right now, we can't book a room to do it, or maybe it gathers a lot of stakeholders across campus and we can't gather all of those 20 people into one room. We don't have a space available to house all of them. Um, and, and we were already, I would say, experiencing some growing pains around that. Um, this is my personal perspective, but I think hybrid meetings are kind of the worst of both worlds. Um, I think when you're in person, you get the benefit of all of that, um, that body language, right? What they say something like 70% of our communication comes from body language. So that's so important. We're social animals as humans. And so there's a lot that you get in terms of relationship building that comes from interpersonal in-person interactions. That's really valuable and can be great for meetings. There's also certain kinds of brainstorming that really thrive in an in-person environment. However, with that said, I think there are a lot of benefits to working remotely and now that we've transitioned to fully working remotely in our office, I genuinely think it's the best thing for this particular type of role. Um, the reason being that 
we work so much with specific systems and we're also often documenting and working with systems that require screen sharing anyway. And so having everybody individually able to take care of whatever work they need to do at their home desktop and also being able to brainstorm, let's say with a jam board, if we're doing it that way, I think is a real benefit for this particular work. And for me, since my work requires me to bring so many stakeholders across campus, Booking meetings was actually pretty complicated, both in terms of timing, travel, and logistics. And so not having to handle the logistics of booking a room that's closest to the busiest stakeholder has been such a relief for me. And it's also meant that I'm able to book time with busier folks, right? High, high visibility stakeholders who maybe only have 10 minutes to give me. I'm able to get that time rather than trying to find a squeeze a, a sliver of time in with them. Um, so I think um, I think actually IT project management really benefits from a remote remote environment, particularly because of the specific type of work that we do. But there was definitely growing pains, and sometimes people's internet will go out, and it is sort of a bizarre world where we live virtually within these little screens. But I think for the most part, the benefits outweigh the harms, and. Um, I think I really appreciate what that provides us in terms of flexibility and accessibility as well um, for folks who, for whom in-person meetings can be pretty difficult. Yeah, no, that's amazing. I didn't think about it that way either, mm -hmm. but I'm so glad that it's been, that there's more benefits or some benefits at least than mm -hmm. none because it's bringing the good out of something that was so unexpected. And it's so awesome to hear that you just have such an optimistic attitude about everything. I really appreciate it. Um, but with all of that being said, I was wondering if there was anything else or any last advice that you'd like to give. For students specifically thinking about IT project management. Hmm. Any final words, just anything? Yeah, I think, um, if it's something that feels exciting, uh, and if you like taking work in little bits and pieces, um, and you like it working independently and also socially, um, I think, uh, yeah, it's a good idea to kind of dip your toe into it. We also do sometimes hire student employees. So if this is something that let's say a student's listening to this and they're like, oh my gosh, how do I get involved? I, I, I'm really curious about that. I would say just shoot our office an email at itspmo at neu.edu and, and we can keep you in mind if we ever do have opportunities that open up because I think um, ITS in general, I think is a really nurturing environment, but it's been so exciting to work with our student employees and to see I, I think folks at the undergrad level have a lot of excitement and potential that they're bringing to the table and a lot of freshness that I think ITS benefits from. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I would say if, if you're excited about it, dip your toe into it. And I think also, even if you feel like your experience doesn't necessarily connect into ITS, I think, I hope that having heard my journey into this, and I'm, I'm not the only person who's this way. I recently spoke with someone else who works in ITS who had a totally different career, but that doesn't mean that you don't have soft skills that can really make you excel within an IT environment. And I think especially as things tend to digitize and we're moving towards a more digital world, more and more people who would have gotten analog jobs are going to be technically working in IT, but it doesn't mean that you're not leveraging the same kind of skill sets that you would at a more like analog leaning job. So I would say stay flexible. And if it feels exciting, dip your toe into it and there's never any harm in giving it a shot. Yeah, no, you're so right. And I'm a communication major. I would have never thought that I would be a student employee for ITS because I would have thought that I would have needed to learn coding or engineering <laughs> or something. But no, just strategic communication. I think you just need to be good at talking with people who do coding. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was all I had. Thank you so much for talking to me. You bet. Anytime. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. Thank you. Bye.